peace and consolation. Today's verse is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 7. It reads, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. The first chapter of the letter to the Ephesians begins precisely with a prayer which is a hymn of blessing, an expression of gratitude, of joy. St. Paul blesses God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because in him he has made us know the mystery of his will. There truly is a reason to express gratitude if God enables us to know all that is hidden, his will with us, for us, the mystery of his will. Mysterion or mystery, a term that recurs frequently in sacred scripture and in the liturgy. At the heart of the prayer of blessing, the apostle illustrates the way in which the Father's plan of salvation is brought about in Christ, in his beloved Son. He writes, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. The sacrifice of the cross is the unique and unrepeatable event with which the Father showed his love for us in a luminous way not only in words, but also in practice. God is so real, and His love is so real that He enters into history. He becomes a man to feel what it is, how it is to live in this created world. And He accepts the path of suffering, of the passion, and even suffers death. God's love is so real that he does not only participate in our being, but also in our suffering and our dying. The sacrifice of the cross ensures that we become God's property because the blood of Christ has redeemed us from sin, cleanses us from evil, removes us from the slavery of sin and death. St. Paul invites us to consider the depths of God's love that transformed history, that transformed his very life from being a persecutor of Christians to being an fledgling apostle of the gospel. Here, once again, the reassuring words of the letter to the Romans resound. If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord, as it is written in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 32, and 38 to 39. We must integrate this certainty. God is for us, and no creature can separate us from Him because His love is stronger in our being, in our awareness as Christians. The grace that the Father gives us in His only begotten Son is therefore the manifestation of His love that enfolds and transforms us. We need to face our reality from another perspective, that is, from the recovery of our spiritual identity. This spiritual identity, however, is neither a defense nor an exaltation of our image as believers. God has provided in Christ 
to free us from the slavery of sin, making us his collaborators and witnesses in the project of life, hic et nunc. May we be a manifestation of the kingdom of God in every area of testimony, in the family, in the ecclesial community, in our works, and even in our very own society. Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for our sins. Pour out your grace upon us, so that we may live a life that is pleasing to you. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a nice day.